the FBI came into my motorcycle shop in the Angels of East Africa office building. Uh, I was told they come in, guns drawn, uh, told everyone to put their hands in the air, uh, patted everyone down. There was an uh, older lady from our church that was even working there, uh, uh, Bonnie. She's about as uh, innocent, and uh, she's, a, she's a true prayer warrior. If you're sick, you want Bonnie to pray for you. They came in acting like everyone that worked for this nonprofit was a criminal. Once they searched them all down, patted them down, uh, got their names and everything, they made them all leave the building. Uh, put my daughter into an enclosed room, and they started their search, you know, searching for, you know, what, whatever. I, we're, we're not really sure. They would never tell us, but we suspect that they were searching, uh, you know, for things leading, showing that I'm smuggling arms to, to Africa and selling them, which is totally crazy. They actually hit the office building, my home, and warehouse all at the same time. They didn't do it separately. They, they went to my home and uh, totally my, my wife was home by herself, uh, put her in a room, wouldn't let her come out of the room. Uh, they totally stripped the boxes, opened boxes, dumped boxes out, uh, totally went through everything in a 40-foot container, and also everything within the shop. There was other stuff in our warehouse that was even packed. I heard that a lot of it was destroyed because a lot of it got wet. So we had unbelievable amount of stuff is ruined in our warehouse. And which, I mean, this, this was clothing for kids. People from our church was packing this container for probably close to two years, uh, and it was ready to go. I mean, we were waiting on the weather to break, and this container was going to be gone. Uh, once they went through everything, they, they basically said, nothing here, and uh, shut the doors and left. What's so crazy is, you know, the rumor is that I, that I was smuggling guns. I have never packed a container ever. People from our church for, for the last 15 years are the ones that packed containers, you know. So instead of, instead of going crazy and spending thousands and thousands of tax dollars, why didn't they just go and talk to the people that packed the containers? You know, and, uh, you know, these are, these are all people my age in their 50s and in their 60s that, that work from our church uh, on, their, on their spare time packing these containers, you know. All they had to do was go interview them, you know, no... Don't go tear up everything and then just put your hands in the air and say, okay, we're finished. I thought we lived in America. But I'm going to tell you something, uh, people. If the uh, federal government comes after you, you have no rights. You lost all your rights. But I can tell you one thing. Nothing will keep me down. No chains will keep me bound. No walls will keep me penned in. Nothing will keep me bound. Any cross they put before me, I'll carry it. As you know, our big orphanage is in Nimely. Thousands of children are orphaned once again uh, from the civil war that went on for many weeks in South Sudan. Uh, we took in about uh, 18 or 20 kids, and we have over double that on a list that we're still going through to make sure they are true orphans. We just pulled a child off the street of Kampala, 11-year-old boy that uh, came from Boer. His, uh, his parents were killed right before his eyes. He, he came on big trucks, uh, about an 8- to 10-day uh, uh, trip from Boer all the way into Kampala, was sleeping on the streets of Kampala for two weeks, just eating garbage. And we heard this story. So me and a couple of the guys from Kampala, we went into a rural park area, and we found this young boy, so we have, we have rescued him. He's at one of my homes in Kampala. You know, South Sudan right now, the biggest thing that they need from all of us around the world is prayer. There's still people going hungry. Even though they're in a refugee camp, they could be safe from the Civil War, but they're still not safe from disease or starvation. You know, it definitely is a spiritual attack. I mean, definitely. But I can tell you one thing. God is in control, and it doesn't matter what happens. 
It doesn't matter what they do to me. God is in control, and he still has victory.